Good day. Welcome to Westchester Talk Radio. I'm John Marino. We are produced by Shark Creative, made possible by Robeson Oil, the house that service built. By Lipolis Electric, don't be left in the dark. Get Lipolis by Hightower Westchester, managing your wealth to a fiduciary standard. By White Plains Hospital, by Michael Labriola Landscape Design and Construction of Armonk, and by Tompkins Mayor Pack Bank. Here, on what's happening in the lower Hudson Valley, we are joined by Westchester Democratic Committee Executive Director Jovan C. Richards. Jovan is also the president of the New York State Young Democrats. He's the government and media relations manager at the New York State Society of CPAs. He works with the PROM National Network, allowing young people who may not have the capability of experiencing what a PROM is all about, helping them to be able to do that as they graduate high school and in other instances too, whenever a PROM opportunity comes up. He is also one-time assistant news director at WVOX Radio in New Rochelle. He is the all-around and well-renowned Prince of Westchester, Jovan C. Richards. Welcome back to Westchester Talk Radio. Always an honor to have you with us. Here we are with Martin Luther King's birthday coming up, with MLK Day coming up just a few days away. A year later, after we talked about the legacy of MLK, What does that mean to you here in 2022? I think it means just as much as it meant to a lot of people in 2021. Um, You're seeing a repeat of some things happening, um, but you're also, you feel a little more comforted. Listen, we've had a lot of things happen in 2021. We've seen a lot of, and and 2020 for that matter. Um, But one thing you're seeing, you're seeing, not, I wouldn't call it justice. Uh, I wouldn't call it full justice. I, I'd call you're seeing certain things happening that are being elevated to the realm of justice. Um, you know, convictions actually happening properly. Um, people are being imprisoned for their crimes. And that's important. You know, when you think about Martin Luther King, you think about MLK, you think about the struggle that has endured um, because of the of the strides he's made and people like him and John Lewis and, of course, the great Sidney Poitier have made. Um, and, of course, this MLK day will be um, even more upsetting because of the loss of the great Sidney Poitier. Um, mm-hmm. Not just an actor, but a human- humanitarian and just a activist in his own right. A lot of people don't understand that Sidney Poitier was not originally from here. He was not originally from America, but he was one of the leading activists for Black lives and Black rights in the, in the United States of America. And he was from the Bahamas. So Sidney Poitier, Sidney Poitier's death. Um, before MLK's birthday is even more heart-wrenching and heartbreaking because we not only have to mourn and celebrate the life of MLK and think, you know, our lucky stars for him, but we also have the opportunity to mourn and celebrate the life of Sidney Poitier, who funded a lot of MLK's um, great adventures. You know, he was one of the biggest uh, financiers of MLK and and the movement in and of itself. Mm-hmm. He also transformed the entertainment industry. You could say single handedly. You can say single handedly, and you'd be absolutely correct. I mean, as a young, uh, as a African American actor in, in my own right, um, everything you did was to become Sidney Poitier. Um, you know, there'd be no Dennis, there'd be no Denzel Washington, there'd be no Samuel Jackson, there'd be no Michael B. Jordan, there'd be no Morgan Freeman if there was not a Sidney Portier. He walked so they could run and dominate in Hollywood. He created, he, uh, Cicely Tyson, uh, Sidney Portier, Ozzie Davis, they all created the, the landscape for Black Hollywood. Ruby D too. And of course, you cannot forget New Rochelle's own Ruby D. Uh-huh. Ozzie Davis and Ruby D, both from New Rochelle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now you talk about 
justice being served to some extent within the past year. I know you're referring to, for example, the George Floyd case and verdict, the Chauvin verdict, and what happened down in Georgia in the Arbery case. I found it very interesting what Al Sharpton said after that verdict. He said, we've gotten to a point where you can go down to a deep South state like Georgia and get three white guys convicted for killing a black man. We do, I guess, live in those times now. And thank God for it, um, because for the longest time, we did not. I mean, you can you can look. You don't have to look too far uh, and look at the Trayvon Martin case to see, you know, a white guy get off for killing a black child, holding a bag of uh, Skittles and an Arizona iced tea. You know, you don't have to look that far off. You don't have to look too far off to, um, you know, when you look. You don't have to look too far off when you think about in Georgia um, that we we now have a congresswoman who's lost her son. And I'm obviously I'm talking about Representative Lucy McBeth, um, who lost her son due to gun violence. And she did not get to seek the justice now that she deserved. But now she's in Congress fighting to ensure that families that ha- unfortunately have to go through what she's gone through get the justice they deserve. So... You know, you don't have to look too far to, to, to see where we've come from. Um, I'm very thankful that the verdicts have come out on what I what I would perceive as as justice. I mean, they killed the person uh, willfully and purposefully. Uh, there's really only one verdict that I disagree wholeheartedly with, um, and uh, it's not one of the ones you mentioned. You know, it's it's unfortunate that you know there's out of out of the many verdicts that we've had in the last couple months, one verdict was uh, one verdict did not come away properly. In my Which opinion. one was that? Um, it's the young man from I want to say Minnesota, Wisconsin, uh, Waukesha. Wisconsin, yes, yes. Kyle Rittenhouse? Yes, Rittenhouse. Yes. That one was um, terribly mishandled from beginning to end uh, on both sides. And the judge was absolutely um, biased. And I believe there needs to be a retrial. But um, it became I'm a circus a that, that trial. That's the worst it, thing. It, about it, was, it. it was horrible. From beginning to end, it was it was atrocious. Um, cops took him to uh, fast food to get him food before he was he was processed. The judge was as lenient on him as possible. Um, there are photos with him and the judge eating and drinking, you know, just regular beverages, not not anything alcoholic, but eating and drinking in in chambers, um, in the most relaxed of settings that you 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 think you would ever see when you have uh, a trial in process. So. Just, uh, just a shab, just a sham of a trial, I tell you. Um, but you're you're also seeing quite a bit of justice prevail. Um, you had the right verdict also in Minnesota too, where a cop was held responsible for knowing the difference between your gun and your taser, and what really convinced the jury was when they asked the judge, can we feel the gun? Can we feel the taser and the difference in the feeling between those two? As one juror said, you got to know there's a big difference between the two. There's a massive difference. And and for those that don't feel that there was one or is one, they're lying to themselves. There's a massive difference between a, a, you know, lead copper gun and a plastic taser. You and know, how it works in operation fires, both of them too. You know, one has a one has a safety switch and one has a trigger that shoots out an electric pulse. Very different mechanical uh, devices. So yes, you're seeing a lot of justice, and you know we can celebrate the justice on MLK Day, but you also have to remember what MLK did. You know, it's not just celebrating the justice that we we've, we've seen for our community, but you're also celebrating the life and legacy that is. Martin Luther King and the people that worked with him. So you're also celebrating the life of John Lewis. You're mm-hmm. also celebrating the the life and the history of every black um, activist 
and any activist or, you know, advocate in their own right. You know, it wasn't just, yes, it was civil rights. We were, we were, MLK is known for, for being a leader in the Black Lives and Black Rights movement. But it was also, he was also very much for civil rights. He was also making sure that people felt accepted and, and appreciated in the country that they call home. Um, so it's not just MLK, it's, it's the suffrage of, of folks who feel abandoned by their country, who feel mm-hmm. um, unsafe in their community. Names it's like terrible. Elijah Cummings, Shirley Chisholm come to mind. I mean, listen, you're talking to a, a, a young black man from New York. Shirley Chisholm is the, is the prime example, quintessential example of what, you know, you can do. You bring the folding chair to the table if they're not going to let you in, and then you keep that door cracked so you keep letting your friends in. You let people, you keep letting the door, leave the door open so people find a way into the boardroom. Remember um, what Michael Jordan said, if there's a wall that's too big to climb, find a way around it. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you, you know, you've got to thank him, too. There's so many great individuals that have led, led the way for young people of color to succeed. And MLK Day is not just celebrating MLK, but it's celebrating those individuals as well. Mm -hmm. Now, his legacy, his life, as we honor it now and as we should every day, every year, how do you see his legacy fitting into what's going on today? How would he handle today? Uh, If he was alive today, I think his biggest fight right now would be voting rights, getting the John Lewis voting rights bill passed. Um, working with Congress and the Senate to actually pass the bill that should have been passed years ago. For, of course, you know, the Republicans blocked it. And currently right now you have two unfortunate Democrats who just seem to, uh, who seem just not to understand the lessons. And of course you have the godforsaken filibuster that continues to ruin uh, how democracy is, is governed um, on a daily basis in the Senate. So I think his fight is clear. I think it's voting rights. I don't think it's I don't think his fight has ever not been voting rights. We need to establish voting rights in this country so that states in in very red particular places that have a hue of blue or have big blue spots in them that can shift an election, as we saw in Georgia this past year or two years. um, they, They don't want that. They don't like that. They don't believe in that. But we believe in that, and we know it's a possibility, and they're trying to do everything they can. Look at the Georgia State Legislature. They have shifted their entire voting laws so that they can basically steal an election openly and willfully because they don't like the outcome from the people. So we need voting laws. We need strict voting laws that protect the sacred right for every American to have a say in this country by electing their, by duly electing their representatives in the most democratic of ways. Jovan C. Richards is the Westchester County Democratic Committee Executive Director. Jovan C. Richards, a couple of days ago, President Biden, Vice President Harris, went down to Georgia to fight to push for voting rights. And some voting rights groups in Georgia were not there. Stacey Abrams wasn't able to make it. Should this have maybe been coordinated for a different day? You can make that argument, but I think the argument still stands. You know, Stacey Abrams has her work cut out for her right now in Georgia. She's running for governor again. Um, and the rules are even even worse off for her right now than they were when she originally ran. Uh, you also have the great Senator Warnock, who has to run again in Georgia and The rules for him are even worse off than they were two years ago. Um, So I I hear, I hear your, I hear what you're saying. But listen, we live in an era of COVID. We live in a world of of uh, uncertainty at every step of the at every step of the way. Uh, You may think you are, you know, you may think you have it all until you test positive and you have to quarantine, and then you miss a couple things. But we can't stop and wait for everyone. Some, unfortunately, people will get COVID and they will not be able to make certain events. But 
Our fight continues whether folks have COVID or not. Our fight continues whether certain people can make events or not. Our fight continues no matter who is being left behind or who cannot be present at a, at a rally. Our fight continues. And we can't stop our fight for one to two people. Our fight remains. We must remain with the fight. We must stay steadfast and have a clear vision of what we want and we do. President Biden, Vice President Harris, they made their opinion and their voice as leaders of this country known. They have said unequivocally, voting rights is our priority. Passing the John Lewis voting rights bill is our priority and it's the priority that we need to get done. And those standing in the way either need to get on board or get the hell out. And that's clear and it's true. So the two Democrats standing in the way need to either find their way back to the caucus or get the hell out the way and, and let us pass this bill. It is absurd that Democrats have been in power for a little over a year or close to running up on, on a year. I'm mean, having passed the damn thing. You know, Pat, let's get this thing passed. If we want to celebrate MLK properly, we want to celebrate the life and legacy. Let's pass the voting rights bill. Let's stop hobnobbing. Let's let's cut the pork. Let's do the job that the American people ask them to do. And let's pass the bill. Whether it's 51 and 50 is 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 fine. It passes. We need to pass the bill. One thing about MLK and his legacy, he worked with unions and he did a lot of work with unions in his time in the 50s, in the 60s. And I find it, I find it, at least to me, to be a victory that a couple of days before his birthday, you have a couple of Starbucks in upstate New York that vote to unionize. And then the company says, oh, well, can we have a redo? Basically, it's like you can't do it again. They voted for, they they decided finally, and I've always found it. and. I don't want to say that I've tried to convince Starbucks people to go union, but I know a lot of people in a lot of Starbucks around the tri-state area because, you know, I like to hang out in Starbucks. Yeah. And I talk to people from time to time about the value of being unionized. I've never spoken to anyone up in Buffalo, but I hope there's a trickle down effect with this company and with the Amazons of the world, too, that another place where unions are prevented from operating and existing and other big names across the country too. And that in his legacy and that just from an everyday standpoint, the ball gets rolling with this now too, that you do have a right to unionize and to, as they say, there's strength in numbers, everybody working together. I couldn't agree more. I mean, listen, unions are a vital part of this uh, workforce. And without unions, we have, we, we, we have a lot of risk, uh, for our workforce and our workers, you know, you need to make sure that in, in, uh, employees get paid properly, have the proper amount of off time are treated fairly and are respected with, by their employers. Unions are the backbone of this country. Unions have built this country. And unions are unions will remain and stay a vital part of, of the democratic process. Listen, I, I'm, I'm wearing a beautiful sweatshirt designed by the New York State Young Democrats. And if you can look right under the logo, there's what we like to call a union bug. That's how much the Democrats support unions. We push so much onto our union brothers and sisters and friends, and they continue to show day after day that unions protect their well-being. You know, a union is responsible for ensuring that a, a mother of three has the capability to send their children off to the doctor to make sure they have, you know, they have adequate health care. Um, unions are responsible for ensuring that that same mother has at least two days to with her children a week um, or is getting paid properly for the overtime that they're working. 
Or maybe can do homework with her kids too. Exactly. Making sure her hours are proper, making sure that she's getting paid responsibly and respectfully, making sure that, uh, you know, if she's working overtime, um, she's getting paid for that, making sure her work conditions are not putting her life at risk. Unions do that. Unions have done that for years. They, whether it's SAG, Astra, or whether it's, you know, the local 338, CWA, um, you know, any, any, anyone, anyone, um, any union, you know, 1199, 32BJ, any union is there to ensure that their, their members who are the backbone of any economy and workforce are being treated fairly and respectfully. And I think we need to do more for our union brothers and sisters and friends. And I'm so proud of the Starbucks that, because there have been two now. Uh, one, of course, upstate in Buffalo or, or Western New York, depending on who you are, um, in, in the great governor, in, in our great governor's uh, home state. Backyard. Yep. Uh-huh. Uh, and then, of course, you have another one. I think it was possibly a little Nebraska. further south. Yeah. A little further south of Buffalo. Metro and Buffalo. Yeah. And then, you know, listen, it's only the beginning. Uh, employees mm-hmm. will, will see, you know, employees will see how how much a union changes their life. And, you know, I've been, I've had the opportunity to be a part of many unions. Um, and I am always in awe of what they can do. And mm-hmm. they never cease to amaze. Build back better. It seems to be right now, nothing happening with it. Nothing. It can't be revived. Some people say it's dead. I don't believe that. I think it can be revived if people get to work and I don't want to say twist arms, but you can work together and make this happen. One thing I find interesting, and I like the way that the infrastructure bill was moved out of the overall Build Back Better bill from the standpoint of, okay, we can't get the whole thing passed yet, but who doesn't want their roads fixed? Who doesn't want better broadband for their kids or for the rural area they might live in? So let's take out infrastructure. We know we can pass it that way. I thought that was a good move. Do you know that According to a Siena poll in early December of Republicans, if you take Build Back Better and break it down by issue, one by one by one by one, most Republicans support just about every one of those issues as a stand alone. Who wouldn't want each one of those issues for themselves, their families, their kids, and their communities? Yet they look at the whole thing and they say, well, it costs too much. Or somebody once said to me, hey, John, what do you want to do? Pass the cost of everything on to our grandkids 30 years down the road, to which I said, don't worry. Our grandkids will figure out a way to make it happen and figure out a way to put that cost maybe a little more down the road, too. So I don't think that should be a roadblock to anything. Might it be a good idea to start to take some of these issues now and separate them like infrastructure was one by one by one. Then you put people on the spot and then you say, well, wouldn't you like this for you, your family and your community? Who do you know where you come from might say no to that? So it's a good point, right? Uh, Infrastructure passed pretty overwhelmingly um, because you do need your roads fixed, you need your bridges fixed. You need to modify old, old, you know, old systems, old old, old systems. Uh, You you know, we live in a, we live in the 21st century. We need to bring our infrastructure to the 21st century. And And get broadband out there everywhere for everybody. I mean, listen, we we live in Westchester, right? This is Westchester Talk Radio. But there are parts in Westchester, you know, especially northern Westchester. Right. That don't have broadband capabilities or don't have strong enough broadband capabilities and you lose service and God forbid you're stuck on uh, a certain, you know, Teutonic somewhere on the Teutonic and you don't have cell service. That's a problem because you'll never get the help you need unless you flag someone down and they possibly have a bar or two or you flag down a state trooper. Um, But I'm all for infrastructure, but the problem with build back better is Republicans are the Republican talking point is, It's a Democratic bill that's too expensive. But you're right. If you break it down into individual parts uh, and you don't call it a package deal, Republicans would easily back it because it makes sense. 
So why doesn't it make sense as a united bill than a separated bill? Well, the Republicans are continuously looking for small wins. If they can if they can get Bill Back Better to not be Bill Back Better, because at this point it's become a Democratic talking point, and Bill Back Better is now a progressive policy. It is Obamacare for Joe Biden, right? Um, that's that's the win. They can't say they pass Bill Back Better. But if we pass infrastructure, and then we pass voting rights, and then we pass, um, you know, climate control and climate change, and then we pass this, that is the Build Back Better plan. We still pass the Build Back Better right. plan. Right, exactly. You did it one by one. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's still it, same thing. It does thing. not make sense to pass it individually. The bill is necessary for the time we live in. Republicans continuously stand in the way of progress. And it's not progression or being progressive. It's literally coming to terms with that we live in the 21st century and we need to be prepared for what the present and the future can hold. We can't be afraid to say our climate is is crumbling at our feet because you know what? It is. And when you're afraid to say that, that's a problem. We can't be afraid to say voting rights, our, our democracy is being questioned and it is at risk because we saw democracy at risk in question January 6th of last year. So we can't question these things because we know it to be true. Republicans are using Build Back Better as a talking point to solely uh, cause havoc and make destruction. They're, if you look at most Republicans, they're for a lot of what the bill does. Individually, you bust it down into sections, individually everything sounds good. But because it's a package deal, and you know Republicans like to, to talk about being fiscally conservative, responsible, um, they're, they've created a, a, a persona that Build Back Better is, is not for the American people. It mm -hmm. is, and therefore it is well. Um, so they just need to realize that a win is going to be a win no matter how you, you pass it. But the Build Back Better plan is the plan we need now. It is the plan that not only protects the present, but prepares for the future. All at the same time, not, not spanning two years to pass seven, eight bills individually. Pass one, and it goes into effect for the present and prepares for the future. Republicans need to get on board. Like I say, I don't know anybody in West Virginia who would say no to anything in the bill. I don't know anybody in West Virginia who would say no to the bill too, but uh, except I, I do know one person who will say no to the bill in West Virginia, and unfortunately, that's Senator Joe Manchin. Who he's is, got the most clout, so that's what counts, right? It's 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 a real pain in the tuckus, John. And I'll tell you because we have allowed this one senator um, access to halt um, progression in this country, and it's not even uh, um, there's no conversations happening. Happening, you know, uh, the Young Democrats of America sent a letter to to uh, Senator Manchin, signed by over a hundred young professionals within the within the country. Many um, local state Young Dem leaders, like myself, have signed on to the letter, urging uh, Senator Manchin to join his Democratic colleagues to pass this bill because we believe it not only propels um, future. Uh, Future prospects and make sure that it makes and it, it, it makes sure and, and sorry and ensures that our climate, our our way of life is protected within this country, but that we also protect the present because you know you can't really think in too far into the future when your present is uh, continuously at risk and, and problematic. Mm -hmm. and Supposedly, he's insulted that people have criticized him the way they have about not getting on board. If you're insulted and you're in politics, I don't care how long you're there. Well, it's maybe skin, you're not friend. doing something that you were are cut out to do. It may not be politics that you're cut out for then. Uh, sound, sounds about right. You, you know, in this game, you have to have thick skin and you have to be able to take a hit. I mean, I, I've taken many. Um, As we I know, hope to, I hope not to take any more, but um, you'll take more along the way. You know that I know it's unfortunate, but you know it's part of the it's part of the game, it's right? Part of the the career path that he's chosen. 
Um, mm-hmm. I just wish he would be a little more responsible and uh, think about his, his his state and then the states around his state and then the nation as a whole, because the nation as a whole needs the Build Back Better plan. It needs the Build Back Better Act. And he alone is standing in that way and, and in the way of actually passing it. And of course, the filibuster is too. But I think Joe Manchin's biggest problem is Joe Manchin likes the power that he has uh, accumulated over the last couple of years. I mean, Joe Manchin was one of the sole Democrats who continuously voted for Trump policies, um, while also uh, while also ignoring Biden uh, Biden policies. Um, sometimes you question where Joe Manchin is on 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 the spectrum of uh, of, of politics. Um, you know, is he really this left leaning Democrat? Or is he more of the conservative Democrat who's a Democrat in sheep's clothing? You know, is he a dino or is he a rhino or is he just the middle, but he calls himself a Democrat? We have the Senate majority by one vote, one single vote. And Joe Manchin has taken that one vote uh, and, and sometimes with help from, you know, uh, Senator Cinema in Arizona. But they have tarnished the possibility for progress. Uh, progressive policies and democratic victories because they have the power to do so. Um, you know, I, I've had many of conversations with the great majority leader, uh, Chuck Schumer, and he has reminded, you know, reminded me and many of uh, many leaders that he has a caucus that ranges on the spectrum from Joe Manchin to Bernie Sanders. Um, and that's hard to find middle ground. But it's harder to find middle ground when Senate when senators don't show up for a meeting. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like Senator Joe Manchin has basically all all but ignored the call for action. Uh, hell, he was on board for a long time until he realized that he had the power to shut everything down. And the Republicans got to him. Um, Is was, he a quasi president in his own mind? A quasi president who just kind of he's not liberal. He's not conservative. He's not this. He's not that. He just does what he thinks will get him elected next. I don't time. think he does what he thinks gets him elected. I think he enjoys the power that he wields, and I think West Virginia allows him to 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 reign uncontrollably. You know, he has Republicans that like him, and he has Democrats that like him, but he also has the ability to to do what he wants to do without without any form of repercussions. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. One year from now, Martin Luther King Day 2023, what do you hope gets accomplished between today and then? Well, you're you're looking at a year where uh, everyone, you're looking at midterms right now, federally, you have state races and you have local races um, all up and down the ballot. I'm personally, I'm hoping for Democratic victories. Uh, I'm hoping that we secure a Democratic victory in the great state of Georgia uh, with Stacey Abrams. I'm hoping that we uh, have a secure Democratic victory right here at home for for not only the state legislature and keep our 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 um, supermajority in both houses, but I'm also hoping that we create a or elect a Democratic statewide leaders, you know, Tish James, um, Brian, Brian Benjamin, uh, Tom DiNapoli, and of course, depending on who our, our you know, gubernatorial candidate will be, I, I hope that they are a Democrat, whether it is Kathy Hochul, Jamani Williams, or um, Tom, Tom Swazi. Swazi. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, you know, I'm very hopeful in, in that. And um, I'm also hopeful that we are able to elect more than one Democrat in another state so that we can eliminate Joe Manchin's uh, quasi power um, in the Senate so we can actually pass things. And I hope that John Lewis voting acts get passed. And for God's sake, I'm praying Joe Biden puts a pen in his hand and signs away $50,000 of student loan debt because I'm seriously tired of paying that. Mm -hmm. It's also a matter of two schools rake in too much money, I think, when it comes to too much. Way too much. 
Or as uh, one young lady who I sent to school to Rutgers a few years back, she actually went into the admissions office and said, why is my tuition so high? And they said, well, you know, we have to pay people. So you have to foot the bill if you want to. If, for the people who work here who have to get paid, that's what we have to pay them now. You see what it is. They yeah. kind of ran down some of the numbers for her in different departments. Well, you and anybody else who goes here has to help foot that bill. And I think there are better ways to work around that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. By the way, George Latimer, county executive is term limited. He'll be done after this current term. He was just re-inaugurated a couple of weeks ago. Will you run for county executive? <laughs> No. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Positive? No. Yeah. No. I'm. Listen. I. I love. I love being a political guy. Um. I think I would make a great politician. I think I would make a great public servant to my community. Uh. I have no desires of ever being an executive. Um. I think I work better in a collaborative effort. Um. I think the highest I would ever go is mayor. Um, you All know, right, so that is elected in terms, office. In terms of, some of executive form. offices, right. okay. in terms of executive offices, I uh -huh. think the highest I would ever go is mayor. But I work in better. I work better in councils, in county legislatures, in state houses. I, I don't think I would. I'd never run for county executive. I would never run for governor. I would never run for president. What if you got drafted? I I, I might maybe lieutenant governor. Um, okay. But but I, I don't I I don't think I don't think I'm the right fit for uh, the executive office. Or as they say, Jovan, about you, the world is yours. I, I I've heard that a couple times, but I I don't know. I'm not ready. I'm not sure if I'm ready to claim that just yet. Sometimes the time comes up faster than you think. So they say. So they say. <laughs> <laughs> Jovan C. Richards, Westchester Democratic Committee Executive Director. Also, he is the Government and Media Relations Manager at the New York State Society of CPAs and President of the New York State Young Democrats, known as the Prince of Westchester, one time Assistant News Director over at WVOX 1460 AM. In New Rochelle, Jovan C. Richards, we thank you as always, and let's do this again as soon as possible. Much appreciated. Absolutely, John. Thank you so much for having me and Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Happy New Year to you and yours, too. And let's hope for the best in 2022 and Dr. King's legacy and for everybody around this country. Absolutely. Jovan C. Richards here on Westchester Talk Radio. What's happening in the lower Hudson Valley? I'm John Marino. We are produced by Shark Creative, made possible by Robeson Oil, the house that service built. By Lapolis Electric, don't be left in the dark yet. Lapolis by Hightower Westchester, managing your wealth to a fiduciary standard. By White Plains Hospital. By Michael Labriola Landscape Design and Construction of our month. And by Tompkins Mayo Pack Bank. Download our app. We have one now. Take it with you anywhere and everywhere you go. It's called Westchester Talk. And catch all of our Westchester, Rockland, Putnam, Duchess, Orange, and Fairfield County programming on our YouTube channel, Shark Creative YouTube. 